What's going on, Flex Zone family? It's a Flex Zone Friday, and we are back at it again with another video. If you're watching this video right now, make sure you smash that like button, share it to your friends, share it to your enemies, and subscribe to the Flex Zone podcast. Top right corner of my screen, it's your boy Byron Dixon, the host with the moist, God's favorite host. You already know we're back again, and we're talking about more WWE releases. As you can see, I'm dressed in all black. Because these superstars' careers are dead and gone. And I'm in the car because I'm riding down 95, seeing who I can pick up and who's looking for work because these people are out of a job. And what better way than a week before Thanksgiving, as we head into the Christmas season as well, as we get into the new year, than getting your pink slip and being featured endeavored and getting the old John Laurinaitis email budget cuts. Eight more superstars released, most notably John Morrison. Hit Row, Tegan Knox, Jackson Riker, amongst few. I'm going to read the information I have, and I'm going to go into it. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. And who else might be released before the end of the year? Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Thanksgiving. Give thanks. Because Vince and Bruce's pocketbook, along with Nick Khan, the con artist himself, continue to fatten their bank accounts yet again. And consider it to be excuse of budget cuts. But I'll leave that alone. According to Fightful, Sean Rossap, the company is part always with John Morrison, Top Dollar, Shanti, The Adonis, Isaiah Swerve Scott, Tegan Knox, Drake Maverick, Shane Thorne, and Jackson Riker. Yeah. So, John Morrison should have never came back to WWE. They just released his wife, Taya Valkyrie. No more Frankie Monet. Thank God. She should be in AEW. John Morrison, I think he went after the money. It was a comfortable setting. WWE knew who he was, knew how he worked, figured he could be molded into the company's ideals of what they want. And what they wanted seemed to be a goofball, a dumbass who's sitting in the back meditating like that's going to make his life better. Maybe he was just thinking of ways to get out of his WWE contract. Maybe his meditation, he reached his higher plane of existence. He reached his higher self, and he's finally out of his WWE contract. He got his damn wish, America. This is a guy who could really go to any company. I mean, you look at his Lucha Underground, Johnny Mundo, Johnny Impact, Johnny Nitro, Johnny whatever the hell you want to call him. This man can go. He's a great worker, athletic. And to think he's over 40 years old and still able to do the things he does at a high level, he can definitely work the indie scene. He could go to an AEW, have some bangers with some great talent over there. The sky's really the limit. I mean, he does acting. I'm sure he's not hurting financially. So shout out to him and his wife for getting their release. Maybe the best Christmas gift they could get, <laughs> get their freedom back and get their release papers. Now, Hit Row. I was at the SmackDown. They got called up the first night of the WWE draft here in Baltimore. I didn't like it at the time. I loved Hit Row. I loved everything they did on the next team. One of the best creations in recent memory from Triple H. But let's not forget America. Triple H no longer has control of NXT. You've heard about it. You've seen it. You've probably seen the writing on the wall. Or you've seen the writing on those terrible ratings. NXT 2.0, garbage. Do you really see anybody on this roster right now, NXT 2.0, being the next top guy, the next top star? I don't see it. I don't see it in Braun Breaker. I don't think Johnny Gargano, Kyle O'Reilly are going to be there after this year is over in December with their contracts probably reportedly up. Tommaso Ciampa is probably going to lose the NXT Championship at War Games to Braun Breaker. So take that for what it's worth. Tommaso Ciampa isn't the biggest guy, so is this time limited as well? I would like to think so. But do you really see any of these guys as big-time main eventers in NXT right now? Avon Wagner, as I said, a Braun Breaker. Not really. I mean, it's really a pick of the litter. I mean, you have a Tony D'Angelo, who I love. You have a Carmelo Hayes, a Trick Williams. These are good pieces, but I don't know if these are the top guys of a company or, as some of my friends like to say, needle movers. You're getting rid of a lot of future young stars. You've gotten rid of a bunch of them already in the Keith Lee, Curry, and Cross, amongst others. Clearly, clearly. Vince, Bruce, Nick Khan are trying to get rid of everything Triple H created in NXT. And there's very few things left. Hit Row was a Triple H creation. 
a Shawn Michaels creation, a William Regal, whoever else you want to throw it in NXT. Hit Row came from that tree of creativity that we love, that we grew up with NXT the past decade. A group, a fresh idea, rapping, making it hip, connecting to that audience, that 18 to 35 demo that AEW does so great at getting every week. That WWE can't seem to get. They take NXT from WWE Network from being an hour to making it two hours, putting it on USA, putting it against AEW to lose. Oh, and we don't have competition. Okay, that's fine. You don't have competition, but you're losing the demo every week. That's just me. But anyway, hit row, top dollar. Talking all that smack on social media. Top dollar, bottom dollar, family dollar. Zero dollars right now because he ain't getting no money. And God forbid if these guys were called up, got new WWE deals, and have 90-day non-competes because now they have to wait longer than the 30-day non-competes with NXT. Really? This is what you want, WWE? Top dollar, don't know where he's going. I ain't looking for him. Ashanti the Adonis probably was going to be the best part of the tag team with him and Top Dollar. Well, they switched that up. So it was going to be Ashanti and Swerve. But Ashanti can go. Don't know where he goes. B-Fab's already been released. Does she go be a manager somewhere else? Do these four reunite somewhere? Swerve Scott, man. He has so much potential, in my opinion. He was a fish out of water. Had no direction. Triple H gave him the hit roll gimmick. It was amazing. He won the NXT North American title. Nothing to do with it. Legado Del Fantasma, they were having a great feud. Probably could have been the first intergender war games match with Legado Del Fantasma versus Hit Row. They canceled that. So when they did call Hit Row up to the main roster from NXT, I had no faith in Vince and Bruce knowing how to handle an urban hip rap group. They've had, what, one match against Jobbers, rapping Sami Zayn to the ring, and then... Rapping against Jinder Mahal and what Shanky, and he even got top out of some backlash about what he said about gender and cancel culture is a real thing. America, be careful what you say. But damn, 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 damn. Once again, as most of you probably out there figured, they were going to be released, and they were. I don't really know where any of them go. Maybe Swerve has a idea and an impact. Maybe he could do some things in AEW. Who knows? Maybe they reunite. Maybe they do Hit Row versus the Acclaimed, that type of thing. Well, can't be called Hit Row anymore. So there goes that gimmick. Another great gimmick done, destroyed, buried, and all black, much like myself in WWE. Tegan Knox. This girl had it all. Yes, she's had some injuries. But she's so over with the crowd. She's so likable, so lovable, which she won as a baby face. Was actually scheduled, quite as is kept, to win the first May Young Classic. Got hurt. Received a huge pop when she came back. Had one of the best moments when Dakota Kai turned on her at War Games, and that created their feud. The girl with the shiniest wizards. Gets called up to SmackDown with Shotzi, Blackheart, or Shotzi now. Become a tag team. Weren't tag teams in NXT. Gets split up during the brand split. In the draft, excuse me. Goes to Raw and is in what? Catering? Haven't seen her yet since she got pulled over. And now she's released. Tony Khan, please sign her. If you're an AEW fan, some may even call me an AEW stan. I don't give a damn. I love what Tony Khan's doing over there. Professional wrestling is back, and he's doing a hell of a job. Say what you want. I would love to see Tegan Knox help elevate that women's division, much like Ruby Soho's doing, much like Thunder Rosa, Britt Baker, Jay Cargo, Ty Conti. You saw her on pay-per-view this past week. I don't want to hear this BS about, oh, the WWE's women revolution is great. Oh, they're doing all this amazing things for women. If you're not Charlotte, Becky, Bailey, or Sasha, do we give a damn about you? Look how they did Bianca at SummerSlam. Look how they're doing Bianca now in a meaningless feud with Dewdrop. She just took another loss to Becky Lynch. Clean. Okay, Becky used heel tags, but she still lost. Bianca is done, in my opinion, as being the champion right now. She ain't getting the belt back off Becky's back. I mean, I don't really care what Becky's doing right now. It's kind of annoying. But Tegan Knox had that appeal of a young baby face Becky Lynch that we loved. Could go in the ring, had the look. A foreign wrestler, not from the States. Amazing, amazing work she did in the ring. I would love Tony Khan to sign her along with an Ember Moon and maybe a Taya Valkyrie could help elevate the women's division, which AEW does need the most work on, but got to give them credit. Impact probably has the best right now women's division, but in AEW after these signings by this time next year, going into 2023. Mark my words, that AEW women's division is going to be leveled up. 
and it's going to be big time. I would love to see Tegan Knox go to AEW. John Morrison can maybe do a, a series in AEW. He doesn't really have to sign, but he could. Hit real top dollar. Sorry, brother. Watch what you say. Because you were so adamant that y'all weren't going to fail. But you got to remember, you're not in Triple H's hands anymore. No matter how great your gimmick is, if Vince doesn't get it, if Vince doesn't like you, so what? You're six foot, whatever. You meet the re weight requirements. He doesn't give a damn about that. You remind him of Triple H every single time he sees your name or he sees your face. It's gotten so bad that I've never heard Triple H to have cardiac heart problems, and he had a heart attack. God, I hope he's okay. We haven't even heard an update on him, really. They gave this man a heart attack. Vince McMahon, Triple H's father-in-law, Bruce Pritchard, Nick Khan, gave Triple H a heart attack. And I would have a heart attack, too. You destroy everything I built up for the past decade, making NXT the best thing about WWE, making it the best promotion in the world. Takeovers being must-see TV every single month. Some of the greatest moments in wrestling history made me fall back in love with professional wrestling before AEW came. What the hell? I don't get what they're doing. Well, I do get what they're doing. They're destroying everything that reminds them of the old NXT and Triple H. And it, they, they're continuing doing it. I'm surprised they didn't release Ricochet. I say this every time. But maybe they see that Ricochet can be a star, star, but they refuse to invest in him. Now all they're doing is helping their competition. Right? Giving Tony Khan all of these people that they built up and created on WWE's dime and money. You hear that, shareholders? And now, giving them to Tony Khan's wealthy hands in Jacksonville. In fact, that's where I'm going. That's why I'm in the car. I'm heading into Jacksonville now because these fools, maybe Tony Khan can give me a job because I don't get what they're doing. I mean, Triple H, you want to go work for Tony Khan? I mean, you would be great in that department booking things. I don't see any really big main events on NXT 2.0, like I said right now. I see Jones. Is he just another Keith Lee, poor man's Keith Lee that they're going to try to build up and make you forget about? I have no idea. This is crazy. Jackson Riker, or as I like to call him, Jackson MAGA Riker. You'll probably see him storming the Capitol. You'll see him at a MAGA rally. Trump 2024, or four more years of Trump, or he's not, Biden's not my president, give me Trump. I don't care about this guy. He deserved this a long time ago when he said what he said. Not that that should have made him lose his job, because I don't support people losing their job, but does he move the needle? Hell no. Do we care about his mayonnaise flavored MAGA rants? Hell no. He could have joined his tag team, Forgotten Sons, and be forgotten in the unemployment line. Drake Maverick. Didn't they bring him back during the pandemic? Did they build this whole storyline around him to make him look like a sympathetic character, to make him get to the Cruiserweight Championship Finals, lose, get a contract from Triple H? And his big moment, oh, we're so happy for him. What the hell is he doing? Chasing the 24-7 title from Reginald. He's released again. He knows he probably was on borrowed time anyway. Another Triple H guy. Spud, as he's known in the Indies, could go back to the Indies. I could see him all over doing a tour, maybe back to Impact. He's not even used on the 205 Live, which should be canceled. He's not even in the Cruiserweight division. Chase, they can get rid of that belt, in my opinion. It's terrible. It's it's, it's really terrible. Uh, let me make sure I didn't forget anybody. Shane Thorne. I like Shane Thorne, actually, with the retribution. I mean, retribution. I like Shane Thorne. He has a lot of potential to me. I mean, I think he could find a job, hopefully, in an impact, maybe an AEW. Obviously, everybody can't go to AEW, but shows like Elevation or Dark, you can do one-offs. You can do a short few. You can bring guys in for a pay-per-view because that forbidden door. Is open. Man, 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 man. I, I don't get what they're doing. I get what they're doing. They're fattening their pocketbooks, removing everything that reminds you of Triple H and the old NXT away from WWE. I don't know who's going to be left. Do, do I think there are going to be more cuts before the end of the year? Are there going to be more cuts top of the year? Are there going to be more cuts around WrestleMania, right after WrestleMania? Wouldn't be surprised. A ricochet, Cedric Alexander, Shelton Benjamin. To name a few. Shayna Baszler. Oscar. These are people that are over 40. 
I don't know what the hell they're going to do. Because in all actuality, now people are talking about the releases more than Survivor Series, and it's already been the worst Survivor Series build in history. I don't give a damn about this card. I know Rome is going to beat Big E. I mean, Shinsuke and Damian Priest is good, but they haven't made you care. They just announced the match on Monday. It's it's Friday now. Usos, RK Bro. I love it, but they not making me care about it. Charlotte and Becky trying to get cheap heat, trying to use social media to advance storylines. I get it. Involving Ric Flair. There are rumors that it could be a screwy finish, a Montreal school screw job type finish. God, I hope not. And if you're going to the show in Brooklyn, you need to boo the hell out of that if they do it. WWE, this is their last pay-per-view of the year. Don't forget that. They have day one coming January 1st. So you're telling me the next month and a half of WWE programming, no pay-per-view. What am I having to look forward to after Survivor Series? I'm not even really looking forward to Survivor Series. There's not really much else on TV, but it's one of the big four. And it's number four. I don't even know. I mean, they, they still have certain people who aren't on teams. They announced some on social media. I, I could see a Tony Storm getting released. I could see a Shotzi getting released in the coming months. You turn Shotzi Hill, don't know why. But these releases, I mean, a John Morrison, Tegan Knox, where is Scott? Got to feel sorry for these people who actually can go in the ring, could have been future stars of this company, and get treated like this, get called up, or get demoted, as we like to say, to the main roster, and deal with this bullcrap. I don't get it. I don't understand it. Because people's lives, the common decency during the holiday season to let people go when times are hard, food is going up, things aren't getting cheaper. People have families, responsibilities, and you're telling me you wait until right before Survivor Series, a week before Thanksgiving, heading into the Christmas and New Year season to release people that were called up from NXT. John Morrison not being used, we know that. Jackson Maga Riker can go back. I don't know what else to say. Let me know your thoughts. I will be doing a Survivor Series prediction and previews where I break down each match. I will break down who I think it wins. Any special returns. Maybe Brock Lesnar shows up. Who knows? But I really don't care too much. Um, I don't really know what else you want me to say. I would say go back and watch this week's Dynamite on TNT. We got Punk and MJF coming. We got Adam Cole and Kenny Omega. Some dissension between the elite and the super click. And... Bobby Fish getting involved and potentially Kyle O'Reilly coming over. Undisputed Era reunited. The women's tournament for the TBS title. Pretty solid match. Rampage tonight should be exciting. I'm just excited that we do have an alternative. We do have something else to watch. You do have an impact out there. You do have other companies, indie promotions, a GCW, MLW, that will hopefully be helped by some of these releases. I don't know where WWE goes from here going into 2022, heading into the Royal Rumble WrestleMania season. Are you excited about this? Are you excited to see Roman and Brock again? Who was Big E going to fight? Uh, it's safe to say he'll probably beat Seth, but who was he going to fight after? Kevin Owens is probably gone next, right? Because he's probably not going to renew. Make sure if you're watching this video, you like it. Drop a like. You share. You subscribe. If you would like to donate, make sure you donate below the Flex Zone 1. Hashtag the Flex Zone 1. Um, I'm going to drop this banner down below. Follow us at the Flex Zone 1 on all platforms. New episodes every Wednesday on all your streaming platforms. Apple, Spotify, Google. Mondays, 10 p.m. The Flex Zone 1 on Facebook, Instagram, and the Twitter, as D would say. The Flex Zone 1. Like I said, donate down below. I'm your boy, Byron Dixon. God's favorite host. The host with the moist WWE just keeps doing what WWE does. Not giving a damn about what you want as a fan. Shitting on your fandom. A long-suffering fan, much like myself, like a lot of you who are probably older than me. They don't care about this product. Vince doesn't care about what you want. He cares about fat in his pocketbook. Nick Khan getting another million dollars. Bruce Pritchard in his rosy cheeks. Not caring about women's wrestling. 
<laughs> and killing the product that we grew up loving. Man, oh man. Uh, these releases, let me know your thoughts. Like, share, subscribe. More videos coming soon. Survivor Series prediction and previews coming as well. Again, eight more superstars released. Budget cuts. But we all know Triple H is being erased from WWE memory as far as NXT. At this point, they might as well get rid of some of his WWE accolades as well because, boy, you talk about taking a piss on somebody and telling me it's raining? The disrespect. Events wasn't Triple H's father-in-law. If Triple H wasn't married to Stephanie. <coughs> Excuse me. I think Triple H might be gone by now. I think Triple H wouldn't have a job. He probably might be in a coffin somewhere because of the stress and him being removed from power, giving him cardiac arrest. And I hate to say it, but it's true. That's how Vince McMahon treats his son-in-law. Aren't you glad that you don't have a father-in-law like Vince McMahon as much as you might hate your father-in-law and mother-in-law? Thank God they're not out here giving you cardiac arrest or sending you to the hospital. But I love you guys. Flex on family. Flex on Fridays. Your boy Byron Dixon, host with the Moist God's favorite host. Let me know your thoughts. I'll be back with that Survivor Series preview and prediction. I'll break down the matches. What I think will happen, what I think won't happen. That'll be coming your way tomorrow. Look for that tomorrow night. Smash that like button. Subscribe. Turn on all notifications on that bell to get all the notifications of whenever videos we have. We have Ravens post game show with Raj and D. I'll be doing more flex on shorts. I'll be talking more wrestling, more WWE. We'll see what happens again. If like, share, subscribe, turn on the bell for all notifications. Please, I appreciate you for watching. Be back with that Survivor Series prediction and preview show tomorrow. Again, we are the Flex Zone. The only place giving you sports how you win when you need it. Till next time, we gone. Peace. And remember, don't get released. Because I'm coming to pick you up. We on our way to Jacksonville, baby.